A few years ago, we received a large uh, grant from the federal government to do large-scale proficiency testing at Michigan State University. This paper is focused on one of the languages, on Spanish, although we have data from Chinese, French, Chinese, and Russian as well. We did testing for reading and listening and speaking, but what we focus on here are the results from the speaking uh, assessment. When the students take a uh, the test, they have five levels to choose from uh, that gives us an idea of their proficiency level. It's, it's self-selected. What we found, though, was that they were not selecting these levels appropriately. Sometimes they chose levels that were too high, um, and then the rating samples couldn't be rated. Sometimes they chose levels that were too low, and then that did not allow the raters to give them um, the, to determine their full range of proficiency. The self-assessment that we created, since the test that they were taking for speaking is the ACTFL OPIC, which is an oral proficiency interview that's computerized, uh, we decided to write a longer self-assessment that they could use to select one of the five levels of the test. So we used the Necessful Actful Can Do statements, which were published in 2015, and um, we selected out of all of them 50. And these um, 50 statements, we selected 10 at the lower levels and then uh, 10 at each of the other five levels. And students were able to take those online um, and use them to better help them select which level of the test to take. And this paper is about how well those individual 50 items that we selected are doing, how well those 50 items are um, self used for self-assessment of Spanish speaking. The research questions that guided this study were, how well were the can-do statements working as a measurement of spoken language proficiency in Spanish? And could the self-assessment items used in the instrument be improved in any way? 382 undergraduate Spanish language learners from all levels of instruction took the self-assessment in spring 2015. We looked at the Spanish students' responses to the 50 can-do statements to see if any of the statements could be targeted for revision. We analyzed the responses with the Roche measurement method. This is a way to understand how the items work together to measure students' self-perceived Spanish skills. If the items work together as expected, then we can make a strong argument that the assessment is working to tell us the level of self-perceived Spanish skills a student has. Not just which students have more skills, but how much more skills. The results of our research showed um, that 35 of the can-do statements that the Spanish learners responded to um, were measuring their spoken proficiency well. Um, on the other hand, we found that 15 of the statements did not fit the Roche model, or um, in other words, there were problems with these items. So what we did was we took a look at the content of those items to try and figure out what was going wrong. We came up with three categories of issues that we could identify in these statements, and the first category was statements that were vague. An example of one of these statements was, I can ask for help at school, work, or in the community. Um, the second category of problematic items were statements that we judged to be beyond student, uh, college students' experiences. An example of this is, um, I can explain an injury or an illness and manage to get help. And the third category of problematic items that we identified were statements that describe multiple skills. A perfect example of this um, is the statement, I can describe a place I have visited or want to visit. So it's hard to self-assess yourself on a skill you actually haven't done, even if you've simulated it in, in the classroom. Um, so some of that is a little vague for the students to think about, you know, concretely, but maybe that same item would be really good at predicting the oral proficiency of FSI candidates, you know, people in the workforce who are using Spanish already for professional purposes and have already interviewed. The conclusions that we drew from this research were that when researchers are creating uh, self-assessment items for foreign language assessment, um, it's really important that the student, uh, that the statements in the self-assessment 
um, are specific both in terms of the content they address and also specific to the population that they're intended to be used for. Um, in addition, we concluded that items tended to work better when um, more than one thing was not being addressed. In other words, when a single skill was being uh, addressed in a statement. For more information um, about the methods that we used to analyze this data and the results and interpretations that we made, uh, we'd encourage you to read our paper, which um, will appear in the fall 2017 issue of Foreign Language Annals. And please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any, uh, any questions.